Most NHS staff in England suffered a real terms pay cut over the last decade. Uh, joining us now to discuss this, the Royal College of Nursing England director, Mike Adams. Mike, great to have you on the programme this morning. Um, well, let's just start with that which I've just mentioned. We understand, of course, that no matter where you are living in the UK, in fact, no matter where you're living in the world, over the past 10 years, there have been any number of economic pressures. But for the health service, I suspect that this is a totemic issue. You've been offered, well, there was a suggestion of a 1% pay rise. But when you sit it next to this real terms pay cut over a decade, well, I, I suspect it's not desperately pleasing. No, and it's it's not something we we didn't know. It's just it's really good to see um, an independent kind of organisation demonstrate the the evidence in front of us all. Um, I mean, it it does highlight the the devastating impact potentially of of this uh, real cut uh, pay cut to NHS staff over the last decade. We do hear a lot about um, the government referring to the last three years uh, pay deal as though this was some triumphant um, huge wage increase, but this is just not the reality. Over a, over a 10 year period, nurses now have less money in the pocket than they did uh, at the, the start of that decade. We, we know we have huge vacancies uh, of registered nurses, but other healthcare professions across the NHS. And this, this also flows into the, the wider health and social care sector as well. And, and this ultimately is about how do we keep people safe? And while we have these vacancies, we are we are tolerating as a society the fact that we cannot give the best care at the, in the right moment to people who need it in all the different environments um, that, that, that they are in. The, the argument often deployed uh, against more substantial increases to, to public sector pay, indeed to, to, to health sector pay is, you know, over the past decade, it's not just the public sector or this aspect of the public sector that has seen a real terms pay cut. Much of the private sector has done so as well. Yeah, and, that, and that, that may well be true, but we, from my point of view, from our point of view as a, as a nursing profession, we are pointing to the fact that nursing is a safety critical profession. If there aren't enough nurses, if there aren't enough nursing support workers, other healthcare professions, when people need care, whether that's in a hospital, in their own home with district nurses, in a, um, with a learning disability team or a mental health service, people are at risk if there aren't enough people. And this is about how much do we as a society and this government value the, the, the expertise, the responsibility and the need for having the right amount of expertise and people at the right place at the right time. And pay is a huge driver in how we recruit and retain our staff. Uh, of course, yesterday marked a year, um, a year to the day from the, the, the first moments of, of lockdown. Uh, nurses in particular have, of course, been working full pelt all the way through this. I just, I just wonder how they are currently, you're, what your members are telling you about their levels of stress, their levels of fatigue. Some, frankly, must be running on fumes by now. Absolutely. And I think this is widespread across all the different environments I just mentioned. You know, nurses are nursing staff. And I do stress other healthcare workers and other areas, other support workers in the NHS are really burnt out. But the, the messages we hear, the, the, the stories, the anecdotes we hear from our members is this is this is stress like no one has ever seen before. And if anyone takes any time to read any of the personal um, diaries or personal um, anecdotes from members that we see on, on nurses that we see on different media sources that, that that can present far better than I can that the stress and the anxiety and the fear um, that that people are left with and and I think this will be you know people will be feeling this and carrying this with them from a long for a long time from now and we have to look after our staff. Um, Mike, I wonder, if, I wonder if you can give us an idea of how the pandemic has, has affected kind of nurse retention within this health service. Even before COVID-19 uh, became a thing, we understood that there were plenty of nurses leaving the profession or perhaps leaving the health service to go and work for agencies. I, I wonder if the pandemic has, uh, has either accelerated or decelerated those trends. It's, it's probably too early to say what the actual impact is at this point. I think a lot of our members are staying at the moment because they feel a real sense of duty um, to get the country through this through this pandemic. Certainly, at the start of the pandemic, this, around this time last year, we did a we did a survey with our members, and around a third at that point were considering uh, leaving or saying they they considered leaving the profession. I think a year on, given the stress, given the implications of the government um, valuing the staff at, at a 1% pay rise, there are certainly implications going forward that, that people, that, that level of people that are looking to leave may well have increased at this point. And we really need to prevent that because 
you know, we know at the moment we don't have enough staff and if we don't retain our more, most experienced nurses um, and also the nurses coming into the profession right now, um, we, we will face an even bigger challenge. Mike Adams from the Royal College of Nursing. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Thank you.